Hello, is the mic working there? That's perfect. So happy to be here. Um, I don't know if I'm an expert. We'll see that after the presentation. Um, the first thing is that I, probably I'm not an expert in health for sure. So um, don't consider I'm saying anything as a doctor, etc. I'm not, or I would be a great pretender. Um, so uh, um, my point is really to uh, to share a few things about this uh, this tsunami and these uh, new trends coming. Um, just to introduce myself, I'm always doing that with three pictures uh, because those technologies were born in the same year than myself um, with the first LCD screen, with the first chipset from Intel, and the first email. Suddenly I look very old if you look uh, at those technologies. Um, and by the, I won't give you the year, now it's, uh, it may, it's too much. But uh, anyway, uh, by the year I was born, on the left you have a computer, on the right you have a phone. So you can measure how distant it is and how these things are evolving quite fast. So uh, this story about the Internet of Things uh, and is really the question about the impact or, or on our daily life. Uh, my prediction is that soon this name, Internet of Things, will simply disappear and one day we'll be speaking about the Internet, full stop. Uh, but at this point, we refer to that as the Internet of Things because we like that. It's just a kind of sci-fi story. Uh, and it's, we are pretty sure that uh, this is going to impact our life because I'm not going to tell you a few uh, miles away from this uh, building, you have the, the FIRA where you can have a lot of devices, etc. you know by yourself. So I'm not going to tell you each and every category of the things which are appearing. There's a lot of creativity a lot of things that are just hitting the market and um, of course a lot of things which are not far from the health and wellness and in many different domains we have things even some some people like strategy analytics now instead of having categories they define the devices by the place of the body the, the, the part of the body to which the the devices are just uh, clinging so you have uh, arm you have wrist etc etc so in a way, we're just recreating the six uh, million dollar man. The, I'm sure you're all familiar with this character, and you remember that uh, it was a six million do do dollar man, but the woman was priceless. <laughs> I'm not saying anything, it, but it's, um, which is a good way to consider the things. So uh, obviously, we're just recreating a kind of augmented man with that. Uh, am I better because I'm wearing a wearable here? This is really the question. And uh, obviously, uh, we're all speaking about wearables, but when it's, uh, it's moving to all the uh, digital clothes, etc., suddenly you, you start thinking about invisible more than wearables, where it's no longer fashionable to show that you're connected, but to feel connected and to benefit from that. So this is really one of the trends. And uh, every time you have something like that, you know, sci-fi movies are not very far. If you think about the Matrix, uh, not the Matrix, but Tron, uh, the, 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 the cinema is not very far. So uh, all those devices, they are just into some categories and they are just bringing some new usage. Uh, this one, which is a brain tracker, it has its own category. It's the category of the, of the devices that are putting the, the hospital closer to your house, in fact, because you can uh, understand the fate of the guys wear, wearing that kind of, of uh, device and trying to control the skateboard. Um, but it's, uh, it's really something where every day we're bringing some creativity. Uh, for instance, this is what we do. With, uh, you can see that in the FIRA. This is a little uh, solution where it's possible to do some telepresence. Uh, and I'm starting to use that for meetings where I don't want to, uh, uh, to take a train or a plane. I simply have this augmented presence with something which is perfectly autonomous. And that may change also the way um, we are in touch with the old people when they, are, they don't have the family every day coming to their house. You can bring another type of, uh, of uh, presence. And uh, what happens to the, to the body, to the people, is also happening to cars. And there, there are like that a lot of things. And just to pay a tribute to one of the first connected objects, some of you may remember this uh, connected rabbit. How many, how many of you had uh, a connected rabbit? So I'm, I'm pretty sure that there are few geeks in the only few geeks in the audience. That's cool. Uh, so the, this uh, this rabbit, Raphael Adjan, the genius guy, was created. That was saying that uh, it was 15 years ago. Uh, he was saying that he had a, a two-step plan 
object for the connected objects for the internet of things we were not calling that like that at that time step one connect the rabbits step two connect the rest and uh, connecting the rest was uh, is what, what is trying to do with uh, the device is not the babushka you see uh, upstairs it's uh, it's really the little motion cookie you put that on any pill box then it's a connected pill box you put that in a, on a bottle it's a connected bottle etc etc um, so it's another way instead of marketing and, and, and developing a product any connected object will cost you at least 1 million euro to from the idea to the market so when you don't want to spend that even more you may use those kind of generic objects so objects 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 millions billions etc so we've tried at orange to find a, a new way to represent all those figures going in all the direction so some figures are speaking about billion trillion etc so at the end the only thing is that it's going to be huge everybody agrees on that how much nobody knows but huge and um, what all those devices and elements have in common and what we think is the most important part in that is that they all produce some data and data is really the thing if you want to get um, above the simple perception of the object as an example what we've been uh, learning is that uh, for instance in in the wellness is that what you can track you can know what you can know what is, is what you can enhance and as a quantified self uh, enthusiast myself I've been playing with that for years um, you see that there is nothing about my weight it's uh, censored uh, but uh, it's typically the kind of things I'm receiving each and every week for the last five years or so so I'm tracking my steps distance today it's good in Barcelona I'm already at uh, 12,000 good if it was only the, the same every day I would be uh, more happy um, and uh, I, it, it hasn't changed anything uh, particular but my perception of sleep this is the first thing I was I was working on I used to consider myself as a kind of uh, uberman superman able to sleep for four hours a night uh, but I, I was wrong I've read that I was supposed to walk 10,000 steps a day to sleep seven to nine hours a day a night and to eat no more than 2,500 calories which uh, I've doubled thanks to the, the wonderful uh, lunch. Um, okay, uh, the only thing I can really, really uh, face is this uh, sleep story, and I've applied that to myself, and I felt suddenly different. I felt suddenly different because sleeping nearly seven hours, I'm on 6.43 average, uh, I feel completely different. I'm less stressed. I can pose while I, I'm doing speeches just to breathe, so I feel better. And suddenly I feel <laughs> like that no I feel really better and so my prediction about all that is that this behavior change that I'm just listing here will be the killer app of the IOT so don't try to get the the application that will be the end uh, story about that it's not a magic one it's just the idea that those objects may drive behavior change and you know how complex it is to have someone changing his behavior so if those objects can trigger that we have a killer app I'm not saying we will have I would say if we have a killer app it's this one of course data is something which is looked at for years where you have insurance companies starting to say that it's the new oil etc uh, and of course it's going to change a lot of business because we see that if you take the data coming from the devices etc you we all face a kind of tsunami that is a kind of third digital revolution and if you take the whole IOT story well each of the elements I've taken only one wellness example it's just a very small slide in the in the pizza or pie or call it as you as you like it's more a, a kind of pie than a tortilla and each of them is a business is potentially business that will be impacted if you look at the figures for data you see that now we're starting to speak about zeta byte this means that we are at the end of the alphabet and will bring other letters to go on We'll, we'll find that because all this data is doubling every 14 months every 14 months we have uh, twice more da data and um, what we're involved in uh, is that there's a kind of giant competition between players from all over the world that just want to be the platform and uh, European players they're just like in the Olympic Games uh, they just want to not to see only American players on the on the top three uh, dimension because it's just a question of 
competition about this data and which is underlying, of course, different uh, perception in the way we handle data. Uh, so uh, Europe has a role not to be in that position, the position of, oh, one additional tech revolution we've missed, just watching the train once again. And so this is why you insist on that, and not only on the aggregation and accumulation of data, because if you just accumulate data, it's just like that, and when the customer sees that, uh, he wants nothing. He is in front of something which is too gigantic, and even if it's ordered, you cannot do anything with that. But it's also a question about what do you do with objects. And if you simply sell objects, you will be in that position. And even if the seller is, uh, is good, uh, you have a gadget store. And every wearable, every object that you buy and who has not created a daily relation to the user will finish its life in a drawer, in any shoebox, in anything where you, you store all the gadgets you've played once with. Of course, there are plenty of topics around privacy because uh, every, any topic, even if it's not health related, uh, even my weight is something which is highly private. Uh, and, uh, and those elements we have uh, started at Orange to work on by saying, okay, the first thing we're going to do is to sign a charter in which we're going to commit on security control, transpar transparency, and support to our users because uh, it's very complex. They, they are not measuring exactly what it is about, so we had to first take a statement and then apply that in many cases. So you're seeing that we're considering, the, uh, considering that the objects are just the emerged part of the iceberg, and the services is probably much more important. So this is why we've insisted on creating a platform. This platform is called Data Venue, and this platform is really something where we are, we're simply doing five things with data. We're collecting, storing, securing, aggregating and exposing, giving access to data in a secure environment, which is, this is a, a basic uh, drawing, but it's just explaining that we're taking data coming from all these connected devices, we're putting them in a platform where we're going to uh, add a lot of other data sources, some are coming from big data sources, some, some elements will be analyzed and defined around the user, some other will be anonymized and, uh, and handled and crossed uh, between different sources and uh, we have APIs everywhere in order to have an ecosystem of players taking advantage of that and creating new services. So uh, just an example, let's apply that to the, to the cats. It's just a way uh, for people making some, uh, some, um, some food uh, dispender, dispatcher or some scales to uh, connect them to, through, to the APIs to have the data getting back and the services being built uh, through data venue, and then suddenly you can feed your cat when you're somewhere else. I'm not sure it's, it will be working with cats, but at least with dogs, cats are too, uh, too clever. Um, so it's just about data venue, it's really a place where it's called data venue because it's the venue where we put the data, and uh, it's our role to, to do that in order to, uh, to build this, uh, this ecosystem. So uh, they're part of the, uh, of the APIs Orange is delivering. And to show you what it's like from the customer standpoint, we've analyzed that all the devices are going to be in so many different applications that we need to group them somewhere. So this is one of the parts of the platform, is the ability to put together all the devices you have from your home, from your, your body, from your, uh, your car, etc., all together and to start having uh, interactions one with the other. And uh, at this point, it's very basic. It gives you the ability to say, okay, when the window is open, shut down the heating. Next, we'll have some other capabilities. When the car is leaving the office, approaching home, let's put the heating on, et cetera, et cetera. And so we'll be able to have all these interactions between the, the objects and all the aggregation for data and services that will be built uh, on top of that. So um, my, my hope with that is, uh, uh, is that we're, we're being able to build some better services. And I, I was very often using this, uh, this picture of uh, Lionel McCoy, Mr. Spock. I was called Spock at, the, at school uh, because of my name and maybe because of my ears a bit, but I've changed a bit. Uh, so, and I have done surgery, I can uh, confess. But it's, uh, it was just um, this kind of dream that all the people in the quantified self were having, being able to build this tricoder, you know, this uh, device, which is immediately able to know all the parameters, all the health uh, state of, uh, status of someone, uh, just to be able to know exactly how to act. So 
this is how I see uh, data contribution to health and wellness, and I hope uh, we'll be able to share this, uh, this vision. Available for your question, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. So we have, we have microphone in the room, so questions? It's the time of the day normally where you, you fall asleep, so <laughs> we can do a little exercise. You can stand up, get up, stand up, and <laughs> yeah, excellent. Good afternoon. Yes, it's open. No, I slept half the day, so <laughs> I still have the morning. Uh, no, no problem. Uh, my question is, uh, who is actually having the IP on it, uh, on the data that is actually collected from a person? Uh, the person. So the, the data collected from the person, personal data belongs to the person. And how do you solve, uh, because we know that Facebook was going the wrong direction and, and Google as well, how did you solve that in a European way, that you have actually second, third use, better uh, uh, solution? Thank you. Uh, for us, it's, it's pretty clear, and I think the, the way we are seeing the rules and regulations in Europe is clear about the idea that data belongs to the people and that uh, it's not possible to take personal data and consider it becomes the property of any company because you're hosting it. So it's very clear, it's part of the statements we've been taking and this is why we have some different perception. Uh, if I'm taking one example, there are um, uh, platforms where you're taking a picture and because you're uploading the picture, suddenly you're losing the right on the picture. This is not something we're doing on our platforms, and uh, this is not something that can be done uh, in Europe. So it is why we need a specific venue and specific way of handling the data. And when it turns to um, big data, uh, and for instance, anonymous big data sources coming from companies, the company bringing the data is the, is the, um, the owner of the data. No doubt about that. Hello, Dio Sullivan from Patient View. Um, very interested to know how you see with everything being integrated um, into one, normally a smartphone, how um, industry and everybody else involved in the ecosphere is going to cope with the difference between what we have on our um, phones from a consumer perspective, what we have from a patient perspective, from things like data privacy, data security, and how you and, and other people like you in, in the industry are going to have to deal with those kind of challenges. Uh, thanks for your question. Uh, it's a vision exercise, so I have to focus a bit. Um, I would say that uh, the smartphone is the dominant screen, but uh, on, a, on a larger perspective, this is one of the screen that will be around you. So at this point, the only vision, the only clever vision we have about that is building dashboard. But dashboard, we all know that, it's a mail-oriented uh, interface, which is just about giving the, uh, the uh, feeling to people that they're in control. So we need dashboard now before we're moving to something that will probably be more like virtual coaches, assistants, or any kind of immersive things that will be around people at the right time. But we need a lot of intelligence to build that. So I don't expect those kind of interfaces to be really feasible uh, before five or 10 years. So short-term, dashboard on smartphone, and then we'll do probably better. Thank you. Um, no more questions. Yeah, the last uh, one. Hello, um, it's hello. Anna, a researcher in physical activity and health. And I would like to ask you how accurate, valid, and reliable you think current apps measure physical activity patterns, like the calories, the step counts. H how reliable you think that is so it tracks patterns correctly, so then we can help them changing behavior. Well, I, I'm, 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 once again, I'm not a doctor. So the only thing I can say about that is that uh, when someone is not moving at all, if you're thinking of people not walking, etc., uh, and you think that, for instance, this device will be uh, wrong by 20%, moving from nothing to uh, 5,000 steps plus or minus 20% is, is a good enough information to say there was a behavior change. Of course, if you want to track things like, uh, for sports people who are just running the marathon, that's insufficient. So it's really, I think the accuracy and the reliability has to be put in front of what you want to track and what you want to measure. And, and I'm pretty sure that when it's about measuring heart rate in the middle of a surgery, 
you, you cannot be wrong by 20% because you will miss something. So it's really about being accurate on that. But I think there is an important fact for the health industry is that we're not treating everything as the most advanced technology to be available. And this is sometimes what I'm seeing because we want to be using the medicine health word. Suddenly we, we raise the level of expectation to something that would be uh, of course valid for any, any elements in the, in the surgery room or in, uh, in that. And so I think that this is part of the elements which probably need some traction if we want to have some probably some uh, behavior change among very simple thing which I personally call wellness. Uh, and if you, we want uh, more and more to see that uh, industry developing because the potential is enormous, but at this step I see everyone being paralyzed with uh, rules and regulations. Thank you very much, Patrice. Thanks. It was a pleasure. And My pleasure. Very interesting.